Hey guys, this month of August I'm focusing on health and the products that we use on our bodies are a big piece of that puzzle. If you want to make sure that you see what we're focusing on next month, make sure to subscribe and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Minimal and safe beauty to me means using a small selection of products and using products that are not hazardous to my health or the environment. So I want to talk about and show you what I use now and why I use it and my goals for my minimal and safe beauty arsenal and routine. I like to be able to get ready pretty quickly and I don't like to have a lot of products. I feel like the more makeup I have on, the more I worry about if my makeup looks bad and how it's wearing throughout the day and I feel like sometimes it makes me look worse than I would look if I just had no makeup on. So my skin's pretty okay right now. I used to have a lot of chin acne that I think was due to bowel issues and so it's cleared up for the most part but you can still see that, well I don't know if you can see from the lighting but um, it's rare that I don't have at least one or two pimples at any given time. So my philosophy is to wear as little makeup as possible while giving myself enough coverage to feel comfortable and confident. And as I mentioned before, it's also important to me that the products that I use are on the cleaner side with few ingredients I don't recognize or am unable to pronounce. Two awesome resources for learning about cleaner beauty products include the No More Dirty Looks blog and the No More Dirty Looks book. I will link them below. And another great resource is the Environmental Working Group's Skin Deep Cosmetics Database. And when you go on that website, you can search for different products and you can search for different ingredients found in products. And the site rates those products and ingredients based on their level of like toxicity. So they have over 62,000 different products on there and you can check it out, type in the products that you use and see where it rates. So the scale goes from one being least hazardous to seven being most hazardous. I'll also link that website below. So I'll share with you the products that I use both store-bought and homemade and there's toxicity score from the Environmental Working Group's website and also what I use them for and how often. So first category would be showering and cleansing. So I use Dr. Bronner's Castile Soap. We have the citrus one right now. And from what I can figure out on that EWG website, it's rated as a one. So that's the least hazardous. And I use that for cleansing my body. I use it for shaving and I use it for washing my face if I'm in the shower. The other things that I use in the shower are the Desert Essence Tea Tree Shampoo and Conditioner. I could find the conditioner on the website and that was a two, so that's not bad. I couldn't find the shampoo. I only hope that they are similar in ingredients and rate the same. I use them for washing my hair and conditioning, of course. In the shower, I'll tend to use the conditioner more frequently and save the shampoo for days where I feel like I need to, you know, cleanse the, the hair and the scalp. I also will use the conditioner first and depending on how you know moisturized my hair is after using the conditioner if I need to use the shampoo to balance it out a little bit I'll do that. I'll also use the shampoo after I do a coconut oil hair mask and I try to do those like once a week or once every two weeks. Sometimes I'm lazy and I don't and that's when you get this. So the second category of store-bought products that I use is for most days and they're mostly face products. So I use the Desert Essence Organic Jojoba Oil for moisturizing my face as well as for cleansing my face using the oil cleansing method and that was rated as a one. For toning, 
or just for fun, I use the Altea Organics 100% Pure Bulgarian Rose Water Spray. And that I couldn't find on the website. They didn't have that one. But I can only imagine, since it's just organic rose whatever and water, that it's probably okay. For sunscreen um, on my face, I've been using the Kiss My Face Sunscreen Face Factor. And that actually rated as a 3 on the Environmental Working Group website. So that's a little concerning. I'll mention another sunscreen later on that has a lower rating so I might just switch to that for my face and body. I'll use the Tarte Maracuja Creaseless Concealer for just concealing dark circles or spots on my face and that was on the site and the 2013 formula rated as a 2. I'm not sure if I have a different formula one but that was the only one I could find. I use the Zuzu Lux Dual Powder Foundation as a foundation, obviously, and that rated as a 2. Most days when I wear makeup, I use the Tarte Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Blush, and the 2013 formula rated as a 3. So maybe it's time to switch to something different. And when I wear makeup, I like to wear mascara, and I wear the Mineral Fusion Lengthening Mascara, and that rated as a 2, so that was great. On special occasions and once in a while I might want to do like a lip color or something or I might need to use a lip balm with sunscreen in it. So some products that I have for special occasions are the Alba Botanica Very Emollient Sunscreen Lip Care and the 2012 formula for that rated as a 3 so I might be on the lookout for something different. The Burt's Bees Hibiscus Tinted Lip Balm reads as a 4. I'm probably not going to use that anymore. The Ecolips Mango Kiss Vanilla Honey rated as a 1. Now that stuff smells really good and I'm so glad that it's a 1 because I sometimes will lick it off my lips. Not really intentionally, but it doesn't taste bad if you know what I mean. And the last lip product that I will sometimes use is a, a lipstick from Tarte. And the 2013 formula rated it as a 3. So again, not something I want to eat. And maybe I will look for something different. I've been meaning to try to figure out which shade of red was best for my skin tone for like the fall and winter. Because I'd like to try the Red Apple Lipstick brand. Let me know if you've tried it. Or you can recommend a shade for my shade of person. And for the body, sometimes I'll use the Shikai Borage, 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 Borage sounds nicer, Therapy Fragrance Free Lotion, and that rated as a 2. That's just for moisturizing my hands on my body. I use the Goddess Garden Organics Sunscreen SPF 30 Sport. Now that's the sunscreen I was talking about earlier. I bought a travel size for a recent trip I went on, and that rated as a 1, and that's awesome for a sunscreen. I might buy a bigger version of that for the rest of the summer. For deodorant, I like to use the Piper Y deodorant. I steal from my boyfriend. That rated as a 2. And sometimes I'll use the Crystal Body deodorant stick, which rated as a 1, which is awesome. And for teeth, I'll use the Toms of Maine Anti-Plaque and Whitening Fluoride-Free Peppermint Toothpaste, which rated as a 1. So those are the products that I use that I purchase in stores and I've made a few homemade beauty products over the years and the most recent one was the Trash is for Tossers DIY deodorant recipe and that called for coconut oil, arrowroot powder, baking soda, shea butter, and essential oils. So I used tea tree oil. I think my skin was irritated by the tea tree because there was some weird reaction going on in my armpits with red spots. So next time I make it, I'm going to use a different essential oil and see if that makes a difference. Otherwise, I found this deodorant very useful and I would reapply it once or twice throughout the day and I always felt very fresh. Another product that I've made myself is dry shampoo. I have a video about that. I've been using it a little bit less lately because I've been trying to help my hair restore its vitality by not using heat. 
So if I'm not using heat, I wash my hair more frequently, or at least wet it more frequently, eliminating more of the oils, so I don't really have as big a use for dry shampoo. But I would make it out of cocoa powder, cornstarch, cosmetic clay, cinnamon, and an essential oil. I used peppermint. Peppermint. I used peppermint. And coconut oil is not even a DIY, it's just putting it on your body or your hair. I, when I'm not lazy, will use it as a moisturizer for my body and it's wonderful. It's everything you've ever heard about how great it is. I'm better about using it on my hair. Takes, a le uh, takes less time. And I'll try, like I said, I'll try to do a hair mask with the coconut oil like once a week or once every two weeks. And that is lovely. I will probably be using coconut oil for the rest of my life. It smells amazing and it works great when I muster up the energy to use it. So that's where I am right now in terms of minimal and safe beauty, but I do have a couple goals that I'd like to work on in this area. The first is to nourish my body inside and out so that my skin is the healthiest and as clear as it can be so that I can further minimize my beauty routine and makeup and feel comfortable. The second goal I have is to nourish my hair so that it can become more healthy and hopefully the healthier it gets, the nicer it will look with minimal styling and heat. So in order to tame my wild hair after coming out of the shower with a wet head, Without using heat, I will usually brush it through and put it into a braid like this, well, tighter and like parted, and sleep on it. And when it's dry in the morning, I'll take it out and it'll have a nicer, uh, it won't be quite as frizzy as it would be if I had let it air dry by itself. I try to use bobby pins to kind of like guide the hair to dry in a certain way around my face. However, it doesn't always work, and sometimes I will use the heat. I will use the straightener around my face to make it look a little bit more polished. This is not great because the, if I'm always concentrating the heat in the same area, it breaks the hairs, and I think I just maybe have to suck it up and try to find hairstyles that look good with my hair type. And my third goal would be to make more of the products that I use on my own. Do more DIYs and that should reduce any weird ingredients I might put on my body and also reduce the waste that the products produce while reducing the money I spend on these products. So that's that. Let me know what you use, if you have any tips for me, if you have any tips for anybody else. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. So I just took my hair out of the braid. Look at this hair. This is after I braided it, after I brushed it through after the shower, braided it. And I did straighten some spots to try to tame it a little bit. I think it's just fried. Needs a trim, needs some moisture, needs some TLC. But it's nice, it's not terrible. I think after 27 years, I'm on the right track. I could be a before and after shampoo commercial. But this is the before. Where's the after?